All right, question everything. Not sure what episode number we on, but today we have a special guest, Pompidou Sangu. That is a French name all the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we were talking before we started the podcast and found out a lot. So this is gonna be an excellent podcast. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna have a breakthrough. Something's gonna happen through this, but without further ado, Let's get into it. Pompidou, or Pompidou, as we say in the US, right? Yeah. Your digital product designer at Dialexa, first generation immigrant, artist, designer, and AR VR enthusiast. For those of you that don't know what AR and VR is, it's augmented reality and virtual yeah. reality. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot to unpack here, but I'm going to start. I feel like I need to start with. You're a digital product designer by day, but who are you when you clock out and get in your car? Mm, mm. Or at this point, you know, working remotely. <laughs> when you, you know, don't close your computer and keep it on because you got to switch over to the next thing. Um, right. <laughs> who am I after, after work? Um, I guess, you know, I, that's a, that's a bit of a tough question, right? Because it, it's, it's like, when you dab on so many little things, it's sometimes hard to figure out exactly like, you know, what do I classify myself? Um, that can be yeah. a little challenging, but I, um, so I'm originally, you know, from, from Cameroon, like we, we spoke about a little bit, um, first generation, is it even first generation immigrant? I guess just immigrant because I'm kind of the first one here. A lot of my family is still back home. Um, so I ended up being kind of the one to, you know, go to school here and try to figure out how to make it here to support the fam back home. And, um, and there's a lot of challenges that come with that, right? But I also have a lot of first generation experiences in that I did go to school here. So I, you know, I kind of know like the American system and, and trying to navigate, you know, just America, right? Like what, what is, how do you become successful here when you don't have, you know, the resources or the people to go to, um, you know, to help you level up. So it's been, a crazy but super interesting journey to, to, to get all the way here, um, to get all the way to product design and then now Dialexa. And um, and yeah, it's, you know, we can, there's so many different ways you can dive into this. So it's like, what? Yeah, there's a lot of meat there in that story. Just, just alone, migrating from a foreign country to the US. And like you said, how do you become successful here? Like yeah. learning, learning the customs, the yeah. challenges that come with, you know, when your name is on paper, mm -hmm. there there's those biases and the stereotypes. Yeah. And yeah. how does how does that affect yeah. affect you? It's interesting, right? There's little things, right? Little things that, that just stand out. For example, I recently, probably just the last what couple of years, I started going by Pompidou. Right. Prior to that, I was always going by Paul because I, when I first moved there, it was like, oh, that's the easier name to pronounce. You're, you know, when you're an immigrant child, you're like, you're not really trying to stand out. I'm just, I'm just trying to just, just, just be as low key as possible. Just pretend I'm not an African kid that with an accent, you know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm Paul as all <laughs> as far as y'all are concerned. Um, and you're just trying to fit in there for years. That's the name I was going by. Um, and so one of my cousins was like, why don't you just go by Pompidou? You know, that's way more interesting. And it's just like, and I was just, I don't know. It just, it was like, why did I never even consider that? All right. It was something that I would write it on, on the application, but I would never actually like speak it out loud with, with Americans anyway. Um, and the craziest thing happened in that the second I switched over to Pompidou, like it felt like, well, first of all, the, easy conversation started because everybody's always like oh where, where you know what does that name come from but it always it just seemed like people just automatically saw me as more interesting right and, and yeah and just doors opened up and conversations just opened up off of that name um uh, and just taught me the importance of like although it is a french name but it taught me the importance of just like embracing you know your origins right and embracing your background and and um and it's just, it's weird how a little thing, like just the name can kind of like change, change an experience for, 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 for someone. It really is. And I, I think that really speaks to the value and authenticity, like being exactly who we are. It's kind of why I like to start with, or 
why I felt like I should start with that. Like, who are you when you when you close your laptop or switch over? Is there the integrity? Are you mm-hmm. who you are wherever you go? I feel like our culture just kind of demands this this split life. Yeah, you're one person in the office, and you're another outside of the office. You're another person with your family than you are with your friends than you are in public. Yeah. So when you made that shift, what, what was the, I imagine it felt heavy going by Paul, right? Mm -hmm. So what did it feel like there was a weight lifted when you, when you embraced exactly who you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Because again, by going by Paul, it was me trying to be like, Oh, let me make it easy on everybody else. Right. Let me not try to, you know, push them to try to pronounce my name, right. Looking out for others except and not myself. And the second, like I made that push to be like, yeah, my name is Pompidou. And, you know, of course they're still going to mess it up, but like still allow them the chance to like correct themselves. And then they were like, oh, wow, that's super interesting. Where is that from? Blah, blah, blah. It was like, okay, like this was never, one, it made me realize that one, this was never that big of a deal to begin with. And if I had just embraced, you know, myself sooner, like Lord knows the, you know, type of doors and opportunities I could have had. Um, mm. But it, it was, it was, I don't know, everything is all, everything is timing, right? And I think, you know, it, it, it was important for me to make that change, um, but it just helped me like embrace myself even more. Um, it, it helped me just kind of be, be more, just be more transparent. Um, and thankfully now, like, I love what you said about being a different person in different, in different spaces. Right. And I think we all ultimately just kind of want to be ourselves, especially yeah. as minorities. Like, I just, you know, we kind of just want to be ourselves when we, when we go somewhere and it's, it's, it, it can be a lot, um, just, just emotionally taxing and just constantly having to like switch up, you know, I'm, yes. I'm this person here and this person there. Um, and, you know, and I remember, I think even before I got into design, right, like being in jobs where that weren't creative, right. And that could be mm-hmm. a, a stress too, where, you know, you're, you're working in this job and it's just physically demanding and you're doing the work, but like, you know, it's, it's not mentally challenging right like you want to be able to do more but you can't and it's like and and this is a weird space that you're in where like you know you don't belong here and you're you're trying so hard to like get out of that that hole um but but it's it's such a difficult journey and to finally kind of get out of that um and be in a space where I feel like I feel like and I think that's a beauty of product design because I feel like it gives us the ability to like fully be ourselves which is really a blessing because not everybody has that right like absolutely to be able to go to work as yourself (laughs) like sometimes depending on the company dressed as yourself like you don't have to you know you don't have to try to pretend like you you dress you wear suits every day um you know you get to just be you and then and then and then that switch from leaving work to going home doesn't feel drastic anymore it's just it's just you all day every day and and that there's a freedom that comes with that man and it's it's a real blessing that I, i i I don't, I don't take for granted. Absolutely, man. That's, I love that you, there's so much in your speech that's to unpack, but the the thing that's coming up in my mind right now is vulnerability. That's what I hear. Like that embracing yourself, becoming vulnerable, intimacy, like letting people see into you, into me see, right? And the Mm, weight that that, that, the weight that that lifts, I feel like, it's great for us to have it in product design, but as we're molding this new world, as we're creating this new normal, don't you think it would be so much better if everyone got to experience what it was like to be exactly who they were, wherever they went? Like if, if they took the way we are in product design and just let people be who they are and embrace who they are and like accepted everyone's differences, how much better of a world we'd be living in right now? No, absolutely, man. I, I I agree. And again, I have friends that are not in tech, right? And when they tell me about their jobs, it's it's 
it, it feels archaic because it's like what like <laughs> they don't you know like it's just like people still do that <laughs> yeah like and, and it's and i think that's the privilege that we're in and that when you're surrounded by a bunch of product designer friends now it's like oh we're all just like almost living in this fantasy land where everybody else still you know is still very structured very strict a lot of companies are still um doing things kind of the old-fashioned way and it's like i don't know like imagine just the quality of life of your employees if mm. they just if you just allowed them to do, just be themselves right like they'll, they're still right. they'll still do their best work but now they're going to be even happier doing that because they know they don't have to constantly deal with the pressure of having to like adhere to a very 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 strict code or whatever um and um because a lot of these rules that that were imposed before just were really meaningless to begin with right it's just we, yeah. we, we created these, these arbitrary rules around oh you got to dress a certain type of way or wear a certain type of hairstyle or can't have colors it's too distracting you know, like all these different things you know and now tattoos right tattoos yeah. all that pandemic happened you got i don't know like it's it's everything's kind of changed you realize like a lot of this stuff doesn't even matter um and it's it's for the companies that are already doing it, where they're allowing their their employees to just beat them, I think that's beautiful. And for those that haven't, like I think a lot of industries still need to catch up. And unfortunately, a lot of them just aren't there yet. That's very true. And it's sad, but I feel like the entire world was thrown into one giant design thinking yeah. exercise when when the whole pandemic happened. And you, you touched on all the rules, the traditions, the, the things that keep it, like we get trapped in tradition. Yeah. It, tradition, I'm, I'm not, and that's the thing, like, I'm not, that's something that I realized about myself over the years. Like I can follow rules, but I don't like rules. I'm a, I, I, I think naturally, and then maybe again, this is another one of those things that like where your soul just attracts you towards a certain profession. But like, I just, I just, I've never been, I've always just liked, you know, exploring new territory, just venturing out. That's why I like AR and VR. I just, I like new things, new cool tech that, you know, or just areas that people haven't ventured and before and um and yeah like I, I don't like I always tell um I always tell some of my friends I'm just like I just you know I I'll accept a rule if I feel like it's justified if it isn't then it's like you know then then it's just it's just there's, there's no need for it right. um and and I like think using a lot common of, sense rather than just following something right, because it's always right, been that way right you know, and it's just, and that can be in, in little ways, right? You know, like sometimes when you call a company because you need them, you know, they're like, there's something that's wrong with your account, or whatever. And they're like, oh, well, our rule says, like, blah, blah, blah. This is just how it's supposed to be. And it's like, damn, well, <laughs> here's a very human problem, you know, <laughs> and like, you should be able to deviate from those rules if, if yeah. need be. Right? And so it's just like, I think rules need to be, rules are important, they need to be followed. But it's like, I think, I always love having the flexibility to like, you know, to, to be open to, to change. Um, and I think that's how, I don't know, just it should kind of be in life, right? You, sometimes you have your own personal rules for yourself, but like, you gotta be willing to adapt. You gotta be willing to change if, if the circumstances call for it. Um, yeah, flexibility and adaptation. Flexible, yeah. yeah, yeah, to be adaptable. And right. I mean, it's, a, it's almost a survival skill. Like that's something, I feel like college life teaches you, but, but life, like life is the greatest yeah. teacher. And when things happen, you kind of have to adapt and, and flex on the spot if you want to survive and, and move up. And speaking of flexibility, where do you find that in your journey, you've had to be the most flexible? Mm. Um. I mean, flexibility, adaptability. Um, again, those are those <laughs> adapting is all I've had to do since I, I feel like since I landed here, right? <laughs> right. So many has been change after change after change, and just like how do you how do you make it 
you know, every day? How do you new circles? You, you know, like even to this day, it's like I, I get, I don't know. There's there's things that like, for example, I always joke about the fact that anything prior to 2007 when I landed here, I probably don't know. So like pop references, like movies, all these things, like I came from what you know pretty much like a developing country right so like it feels like everything back home is almost like a few decades behind so coming here school wise they're always doing great because school is always really tough but like culture wise and all these different things like they've always been kind of further back and that's obviously before the internet as well now things are a little different everyone's on facebook whatsapp all that um but back then it was like i didn't know a lot of this stuff so when i came to the u.s I was still like watching Chinese. It was pretty much like the, the Wu-Tang era. That's the era yeah. that we were in back home. And this was 2007 when I landed. Uh, so it just, it's just my worldview has always been just a little skewed. Um, but I had to adapt, right? And I, and I had to, you know, adapt with what's learning, learning the language, um, making friends, um, having to figuring out the whole college system now because you know I didn't have a whole lot of like financial support for that thank god I got um you know DACA at the time which allowed me to be able to go to school and work because if not for that 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 whole trajectory could have been different um but being allowed to work helped out a lot um but then you know even in the job now it's like things are a little different in that you know it's just I've had I had to adapt once more because for example, back home, like we grew up with this whole like it's always like a hierarchy of like you know you can't speak to your elders a certain way. You can't even call your elder by their first name. Like that's disrespectful, right? So first job at Walmart, and, and I'm over here having to like call all these people way older than me. I'm a freaking eighteen, you know, by their first name, and like that was a little jarring to me, and that's that was a discomfort because it was just like we don't we don't do that, you know. That felt oh, disrespectful. Yeah. Um, and so I had to get get over that. And then six months later, I was able to become a, a manager. And now I'm like freaking still 18, having to manage a bunch of adults, you know, people like, you know, they're near my mother's age. <laughs> uh, and again, back home, this would be absolutely insane. Like, are you kidding me? Like you, you're 18 managing a bunch of grown folks, like nobody would even allow you to. Um, yeah. But I had to, I had to adapt still, right? I had to, I had to find a way to like, still communicate with these people uh, and while showing them respect because I, you know, respect is just super important just to me and in our culture. Um, and, and I think, you know, from there going to school or college, balancing the whole work, working full time, trying to go to school thing. Um, and then eventually deciding to get into product design and trusting my own gut and, and, and that in that whole space, right? And trying to adapt to, to I don't know, becoming a designer. Cause I also didn't, I didn't go to school for it. <clears throat> I was, was self-taught. So uh, I kind of went the self-taught route of like, you know, I can, I can go on YouTube and learn all these different things and, and apply. And, and that was a whole journey in itself. But yeah, um, there was a lot of, it required me to constantly have to grow, constantly have to push myself, constantly look, have to look at the next, the next, you know, what's the next level from here, right? And, and never yeah. get comfortable in where I'm at. Um, and I think one of the biggest things that I've kind of learned throughout this whole journey is just that like, I don't know, there's always, there's always a next, like wherever you're at, it's never, it's never, never like the final or the end. Yeah. It's yeah. never the end, right? Yeah, like I think I, I had so many, especially when I first came in, I was a lot younger. There were so many instances that, or situations that felt like, wow, like this is it. Like, I don't think things will ever get as bad as this. And then I would always overcome it. And then it's never gonna get as bad. Like, this is like the lowest. And then I would always overcome it. And it's just like, and then you look back and it's like, wow, like it was really bad. It was really bad back then. But then, you know, and then another situation pops up, right? And then after having gone through so many of those, it's like, Man, I feel like you can literally throw anything at me. I feel like you could toss me anywhere and I'm probably gonna find my way out because it's just, you know, it's just, it's just about big, there's always steps you can take to get, get yourself out of that situation. You just gotta be, you just gotta have the drive to do it and not, and not give up. I love that you touched on that because that, that was gonna be sort of my next question is 
while it may seem like a disadvantage at first coming into a new country, having to adapt, having to be flexible, having to figure things out, it actually probably was an advantage because you you built this muscle that most people don't get because they they never get out and see yeah. that there's a world outside of the, yeah. the USA and that yeah. you know not not everything is as limited <laughs> as we yeah. have it over here or as yeah. as easy sometimes like yeah. I know growing up in France like you said, the, the culture was 10, 20 years behind. When I got there, sneakers and jeans were like, whoa, you're the cool dude. And I'm like, what? Because they're wearing yeah. slacks and penny loafers. And yeah, that, wearing that to school. Yeah. Now, I know that it had to feel kind of overwhelming. Was there any sort of mentorship or a relationship that that inspired, encouraged, or motivated you? And if so, like, how did you nurture that relationship? Mm. I think um, I've had, I've had, I've been fortunate in that I've had like very key people that really just kind of like, just, just helped me throughout the years, just kind of, just kind of keep my head above the water really. Um, you know, I, I think as early as like back in middle school, I met my best friend and our relationship just, I don't know, he was always someone that very different for me. For some reason, we always just kind of clicked, but, you know, he was like very American. Um, and and at the time, again, I'm just, I'm just this new African kid, like America is still new to me. I don't really understand anything, um, but just kind of watching him now being the world and just his charisma was always like, was always interesting. Um, so that kind of helped, helped me stay grounded throughout, throughout, you know, middle school, high school, all of that. Um, I've had teachers over the years that really like took their time to help me out. Um, those have always helped. Um, I've had, um, a mentor, like a church, um, pastor, you know, who, 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 who used to like, he would come, he would have Bible study with us and just kind of, you know, just leave words of wisdom here and there. And, and, and like, and it was one of those things where it wasn't even like a direct mentorship, but it was one of those things where like, he left enough nuggets that it, it just kind of stayed with me, you know, yeah. <laughs> forever type of thing. Um, and, and, but a lot of it, I think, I don't know, man, a lot of it was, was also just kind of being, being, not wanting to give up and knowing that like I had people back home that I wanted to to make happy, right? That I that I wanted to make proud. So like and just kind of pushing forward regardless of the of the obstacle. Um and you know, but I've I've always tried to kind of keep I don't, I don't know, I've always had like people in my corner that I felt like, okay, if, if things were bad, you know, they'd be willing to kind of step up and, and support and and that's always helped. So you definitely can't, you can't get, you can't get to whatever level of success that you're trying to achieve alone, right? It's one of those things yeah. you always, there's always people along the way that, that, that can help you. And that's been a big blessing too, in that I feel like God has always blessed me with, at every point, that, at every level that I've been at, I've always had someone to, that just came out of nowhere. So, because again, I don't have, any, I don't really have much family here. So I can't even be like, oh, I had this uncle. And like, no, it's just. I've always had just this, this random person that just popped into my life, just kind of help, wow. like, help me out, um, just to make it to the next year, and then the next year, and then the next year, um, and some of them come and go, and some of them I've, I've, I've thankfully stayed, and I've been able to just almost, like, collect people here and there um, that I can almost call family, but and that's, that's been, awesome. I think for me, that's been the biggest blessing, just, like, just, just relationship, right, the power of just, you know, community people helping each other um and because that's, that's that's impacted me a lot and that's something that i try to like push for and just in any environment that i go man that is amazing like that is the epitome of faith in action like you had to take the step and continue to put one foot in front of the other not knowing what was coming next and like you said just people came out of the woodworks just every step of the way yeah. you had someone to help you almost yeah. like serendipity right yeah. just it works out just the way it's supposed to 
yeah. if you just keep going. Yeah. So in yeah, that's that, the key thing, right? Yeah, the the perseverance, right? Yeah. So I like what you said about you can't do this alone. If you want to go fast, go alone. Mm -hmm. If you want to go far, you have to go together. Together, yeah. Now, in all of this journey, was there, I, I know you said that the, the, your pastor had left enough nuggets for it mm -hmm. to stick with you. I know that nuggets are useful, like those bumper sticker quotes, like yeah. uh, keep on going, uh, have to keep the faith. I, I can't think, I can't think of a bumper sticker <laughs> uh, saying when I need to, but was, were any of those in the form of a question that played over and over again in your mind? A question, a question. That's an interesting question. Um... So like a question, a question that when it was asked, it di you didn't have the answer then, but you couldn't stop thinking about it once it was asked. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I necessarily, I probably, I probably, I probably did. I think, I think, I think a big one for me was Hmm. That's an interesting question. That's an interesting question. Um, That's a tough one, isn't it? It is. It is a question that that is definitely. I don't think it's definitely like a, a bumper sticker type thing, but um, could it be like just something that you you I don't know, kind of question in your in yourself? Like, yeah, absolutely. Like a. Because I, I think, I don't know, like, am I able, can I really do this, right, is one of those mm. things, you know, that I've, I've always kind of just asked myself, right, um, and thankfully haven't allowed myself to, to, you know, to say no to that answer, I've always, I've always tried to, to thread forward, but I feel like I've, 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 I've put myself in a lot of situations where, um, that were definitely outside of my comfort zone. Um, that were definitely me trying to maybe even overreach for something that probably couldn't even do. Um, whether it's like starting little businesses here and there. I think back in um, right when I graduated from high school, I tried to start like a, a delivery service business, um, similar to the freaking DoorDash and all that. But again, that wasn't really a thing at the time. And yeah. part of it was because you know I was working at Walmart. I had certain customers that you know, had Ill certain illnesses and all that, and they didn't have anyone that could deliver it to them. Um, so sometimes wow. they would, it might take weeks and then they'll eventually come to the store to try to pick up everything, but like they needed, they needed a lot of help. And I was like, I was hoping that I could try to come up with some type of service to be able to, you know, deliver to people that just weren't able to kind of move, right? Um, yeah. Or move easily. And um, life happened, wasn't able to kind of get that off the ground. But again, like, thinking about it today it's like wow that, that's a big that's a big like because I had already like come up with like different systems of like you know if someone was to text us the number there'd be like an automated response all these different things like finding creative solutions like to, to make this 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 system work um and um but that's you know it was a pretty big you know it could have been a pretty big and taxing business right but at the time i was just like so like oh i can do this i can do this um that i didn't even think about just the, the scale of it um yeah. and, you know but I've, I've i've i feel like i've tried to tackle a lot of these like big projects where you know the question is like can i really do this and i've always kind of told myself yes even if i even if i couldn't yeah. um and even if i failed the blessing was that i always learned a lot in that process and i feel like i've learned so much from a lot of my failures yeah. that you know it's led me all the way here right and and I, and I wouldn't I wouldn't take it back uh, but can I really do this I think it's definitely one of those questions that that I, I I used to always ask myself and I still ask myself because there's always new things that I want to like try to push for and and it's like it's difficult it's intimidating you know it's like can I is this this me uh, am I really meant for this but 
you know, I try to always push forward with what I feel like when I get to that point where I'm asking myself that question, that's a good thing. And yeah. I should probably like, keep going forward. I mean, yeah, if there's doubt, that just means you're doing something big enough, right? Right. right. And now in that doubt, and you pushing forward, would you say that there was a point where you had an aha moment where you realized that, like, for example, my first UX project was a volunteer project. It was pro bono. I was helping mm -hmm. uh, Joy Kendall with the app Quixit and the redesign. And in going through the process, I realized there that I knew what I was doing. And then it was reinforced when I volunteered at Dallas Give Camp. And it was like, just one of those moments where the imposter syndrome just melted away. Yeah. Was, was there, was there a moment like that for you? It melted away that quickly for you? Cause for me, it definitely, I feel like I've had a series of like those little moments, right? I used to, cause I did a little bit of graphic design as well. Yeah. Um, and I was freelancing a lot. And um, when I decided to switch the product and I started designing websites, I went on Fiverr, decided to, you know, just kind of start putting my services out there. Um, and I got a client and he would like come to me with work. Um, and I would, I would grind, grind, like work full time, go home, put in the time, again, really underpaid, drastically underpaid, wouldn't recommend right. it. Um, right. Especially when you're starting out, it's, it's, it's really, really tough. Um, but at the end of it, I would always deliver you know the project and he would always be happy and and, and i think all those like small wins kind of helped build my confidence especially not having gone to school for it so it was mm. like okay like i know that i'm i'm delivering i'm feeling confident my portfolio was still trash <laughs> i didn't know how to reflect it properly but <laughs> but i was like i was like i know i can do this you know they just don't know it yet but I know I can do this I know if I'm given the opportunity and I just know my work ethic so I was like I know I can do this but I just need the, the, the opportunity um but I think even in still getting I got a job at a at a startup you know and I was doing that and I was able to like I was pretty much the, the sole designer on on the team and 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 working with everyone and that gave me another boost of confidence um and I think some of the people around me helped kind of boost that confidence as well because they were like you're always like super humble, but like you're doing really great work. And for me, it was just like, because I know where I want to be, I just never felt like I was, I was there yet. Right? Like I never felt like I was doing enough. Um, yes. And I think it wasn't until maybe like two jobs in, or I think yeah, the, the job after that, that I was like, okay, that I realized like, cause I got a job after that, I got a job at City, right? And, and I think working there, it made me realize like, oh, like, this whole time I've been thinking that I need to like get to like this crazy high level before I can feel like really feel like a designer, right? And then you and then you realize it's like ultimately it's about delivery, right? Can you deliver, yeah. right? And if you yeah. can, then then you're doing it. <laughs> you know, you don't you don't need to be this master designer selling courses and all this stuff for you to be able to call yourself like a designer. It's just, you know, you're gonna get there, but you're already there. Um, and I think that helped me kind of just like finally let go of that, 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 that anxiety that I had about like not being good enough. Mm. That's really good, man. I like what you said. It melted away for you that fast. <laughs> like, it stuck with me. because mine, mine, mine lingered for a little bit. It's still lingering. Even with doing this podcast, it's, yeah. I started this about a year ago, almost to the date. And why it's it's only like the 15th episode total when i've had mm -hmm. so many conversations it could have been amazing podcasts there's there's so much meat in these conversations that for for that doubt to drive you like that actually inspires me because even though i'm driven like you said there's that bar that we have set for ourselves so we know where we want to be and we know we're not there yet so we mm -hmm. it's almost like we don't appreciate the little baby steps along the way yeah. to where we're going. And then when we get where we're going, we realize that it wasn't all that we thought it would be. And we yeah. still got to move up or grow. Right. Um, so it sounds like you're pretty crafty. And 
I know we all have our our hobby or some mm -hmm. some side project that we're doing at some time. How do you comfortably juggle your day job with your hobbies and what are what are your hobbies? Yeah. How do you unwind? And that's yeah, that's that's the part. That's the struggle. That's the biggest struggle that I have like today is just how do I I have so many interests. How do I how do I juggle all of it? Um I I think this year I finally had to decide like I need to just pick two things to focus on and just and just 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 focus on that. Stop accepting outside projects, mm. stop doing all these different little things. Um I'm trying to get into I'm I'm in a period right now where I'm trying to like find an actual like hobby that I can really like dedicate to. Um mm. I used to, you know, I used to draw for for you know, since since I, I came to the U.S. and that helped me out a lot and just helping, giving me like something to really focus on. Um, I got fairly good at it. You know, I, was, I was doing like pencil drawings. I think, you know, I think a couple of years ago, I decided, okay, let me try my hand at like digital art. And, and that was cool and that was interesting. Um, but finding the time, you know, to sit down and draw while you're trying to like, because I was still, you know, in that grind phase, right? And it's yeah. hard to like maintain a hobby when you're in that grind phase of, trying to get this job, still working my full-time job, working on my, every, every chance I get, I'm working on my portfolio. I actually mm. laugh at the fact that, um, cause you said that, and then the podcast that you had someone like write up your resume or whatever. I wish I had done that. I would have saved you so much time. Cause fam, the amount of iterations, I literally have a folder. Cause that's the other thing. I just hoard a bunch of stuff. So I have a folder of every single iteration <laughs> of my resume that I've made, like literally slight iterations. And then I would yeah. be posting. And it's just, I've done so many changing it. I'm like, oh, maybe it's my resume that's not working. Changing that, changing this. You hit up one article and it's like, oh, have your photo on your resume and like all these cool stylistic creative stuff. So you change it all up. Then you find out somebody else tells you, nah, you shouldn't have your photo on there. Take that down. <laughs> and you're just like, you're just, you know, you you just because part of it is because I also didn't have like a specific leader, you know, yeah. to kind of help me guide me through this thing. So it was like just taking in all this non internet nonsense and just and just throwing things at the wall and hoping something sticks right um, right and, and 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 that was that was just a long journey so i'm finally like i feel like i'm finally kind of out of that that grind phase um where i can actually like sit down and breathe a little bit you know be able to have these conversations be able to, to help different people out um and kind of venture out a little bit but photography is something that i've always wanted to get into um, I realized that as much as I enjoy drawing, like it's something, I don't know, it's something that I don't have as much time for. Um, I miss just being able to like sit down for like five hours and drawing. And like, if I'm not able to do that, it just like drawing for an hour, there's only so much you can get done. So it's just like, it just, it kills me. And I get so frustrated. Whereas with photography, there's like almost like an instant kind of joy that comes with that. Right. Yes. Um, and, and so that's something that I'm really trying to get into street photography specifically, because um, it also allows me to like go outside, walk around, explore, potentially meet people. Like um, I feel like there's a lot of fun that I just I love I love venturing out. So it's just you know let me discover Dallas, let me find out what's out there that uh, some interesting little corner that nobody's seen. Um, so so that's what I'm really trying to get into right now. Um, but of course I still have like my little side projects. Uh, I'm trying to create a me putting it out into the wall and trying to create a digital gallery right now um like my little personal like digital art gallery um where i can showcase like you know what is my art or other people's art um and and that's a really like fun and interesting project because you know it's something that i really have plans to make i mean i plan on making it into something much bigger but i'm I decided like what's like the minimum viable product essentially that I can that I can come up with today um, to get this mm. idea started. So this is this digital this digital thing is, is what I'm trying to come up with right now, um, and that's been that's been a fun little side thing. But even with that, like I'm trying not to overwhelm myself, trying not to you know, because again, right, you get to that point where you start doing too much in your personal life, and now that affects your job, right? Because you're not yes. sleeping, you're too busy staying up till three in the morning you know, trying to work on this idea and then now it's affecting your, 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 your job duty. So yeah. I'm trying to, I'm really trying to work to find that, that balance of like work, 
do my my eight hours, get off, you know, put in some time on this personal thing, and then just kind of like call it a day and, and learning when to stop. Mm. Especially when your desk, when your workspace, your desk, everything is like right here. It's hard. It's hard to know. Like it's hard to disconnect. You know. Yes. Yes, I feel that a hundred percent, one hundred ten percent. I'm in my bedroom right now. My bed's on the other side mm. of the screen. Oh wow. And my bathroom's here, so the only thing I'm missing is a kitchen up here, a <laughs> mini fridge, and I can live up here. Yeah. That balancing act, man, I feel like that's the creative curse because we have so much we want to do, and then there's so this idea. Yeah, so many ideas, and then the the FOMO that kicks in, the fear of missing yeah. out. Like, if I say no to this project, are they gonna? How are they gonna feel about me? Am yeah. I am I gonna ruin my my chances? Yeah. And there's yeah. always going to be something else you can say yes to. Yeah. But I almost feel like there's, rather than adding to your plate, there's always something you could take off, right? Mm. There, I don't remember exactly who did this, but it was the 525. Mm-hmm. I want to say it's Jim Rohn, but I don't know. So he said, write down 25 things that, you need to do that are priorities like Mm -hmm. okay now out of those circle the top five now what's the most important out of that well that's your priority everything else is just busy work right right you like to stay busy especially someone that is is motivated (laughs) and has a bar set has a a north star Mm -hmm. somewhere they want to go it's hard to stop moving and i can totally relate to what you were saying with the it, it I could get lost in editing these videos and um, doing anything creative and 10 hours can go by and I haven't eaten. I haven't got up to go pee. My body's hurting and I'm just in heaven creating. Don't notice. Yeah. Don't notice. So an hour, but by the time an hour goes by, I'm like, what? I'm like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even get started. <laughs> so yeah, man. it's the real thing. Yeah. In this journey, I, I've had a mantra that that's helped me help me out with this a lot, and it's just do one thing every day that scares you, right? Eleanor mm-hmm. Roosevelt. I feel like I'm saying that wrong every time I say it. Do one thing every day that scares you. <laughs> one thing, just one thing every day that, that scares you, right? Yeah. My business coach says if if your dream doesn't scare you, if your goals don't scare you, they're not big big enough, right? Yeah. You almost a hundred percent of the time when you set a waypoint, when you set and a direction that you want to go in something that you want to reach for you'll get it so why are we aiming so low right is there a mantra i know you said the question was can i do this can Mm -hmm. i really do this it it almost feels like it's not empowering but if you're anything like me you're probably motivated by pain right so Mm. the the doubting yourself almost makes you have to outperform yourself as well so is there Rather than a question, is there a mantra? Is there something that that keeps you going that you tell yourself? Something that keeps <clears throat> something that keeps me going that I tell myself. Yeah, man, it's it's. I mean, I think I've been blessed to, despite my my life experiences, I think I've been blessed to never have someone. I don't know, like I've never had someone tell me that I couldn't do something right mm. um that I couldn't achieve something like I knew I couldn't achieve let's say for example I may not have enough money I may not have this the resources blah 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 but like I know that if I had let's say the money if I had you know the resources the means whatever I would be able to achieve that thing right so my 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 thing is always like how do I go about achieving that you know how yeah. do I go about solving that um and I just I've been able to just look at everything as as a problem it's a problem that needs to be solved you know wow. and 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 it's it can be hard right because depending on where you are depending on your situation um you know for example with this digital gallery thing that i want to do i know that like if someone donated me a bunch of money tomorrow fam, it'd be the best freaking you know idea in the world i could make i could really make something cool out of this but that's not easily that's not that easily achievable right because there's, there's a lot of steps that you have to take to not 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 saying it's impossible i'm saying where i'm at right now that's not that i can't just like 
just, I can't just, you know, speak to someone and they're like, oh, okay, here's a bunch of money. Um, there's work that has to be, there's steps that have to be taken to get there. Um, and it's about like, it's about working backwards and figuring out, right, here's my, my big crazy goal that I want to get to. How do I work backwards and, and, and get there? Um, yeah. So mantra, mantra was like, I think it's really just a matter of, um, I finally figured it out. I, I don't know where I read this. But it said, what can you do today to get you closer to your goal? I forgot about uh, this completely, but that's it. Um, that's literally, that's literally what I've what I've lived by for, for quite a few years now. Um, because I always have big goals. I always have this thing that I'm trying to go for. And it's like, what can I do today to get me closer to that goal? You know, and by putting it that way, it's like even if it's an hour towards this idea, that's still something, right? Uh, it could be an hour, it could be five, it could be 10, whatever. Um, it could be just talking to somebody about about something that that will trigger, you know. So it's just what can you, what are you doing today to get you closer to your goal? Um, and that's helped me out with with pretty much everything. I'm seeing the breakthrough happen here. The question <laughs> came, but you had to talk through it. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's that's, that's the, yeah. I was like, I forgot. I kind of I forgot about that because I always, always, always kind of having the back of my mind but yes that is that is that is that is it what can I do the day to get close to my goal and I forgot where I pretty sure it was like a book that I read and read it in or something but yeah yeah that's been that that stuck with me and those are the things that that make the change happen those things yeah. that that stick with you and there's a reason they stick with you because they 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 get that subconscious working like those mm -hmm. kind of questions are kind of questions you want yeah. to be asking yourself that yeah that empower you to do more to, to try more to to grow more um so you said i can't just if someone donated a bunch of money mm -hmm. that would be great you could get started on your goal listening to Tony Robbins and all these motivational speakers in, in my journey, I, I, I hear a lot of motivation that that's just my thing. I love it. But mm -hmm. One thing that, that, that stuck with me and I have personal experience with this is our problem is never resources. It's resourcefulness. Now, let me, let me, add my personal experience into that. Cause when Tony mm -hmm. Robbins said that, I was like, that's really interesting. That's a good one. Right. Mm -hmm. When I was making music on a JVC boom box mm -hmm. with the RCA jacks that plugged into the little portable CD player. Yeah. And I had to record on one tape. And if I wanted to make another track, I'd have to take that tape out, put another one in yeah. and re-record re over that. And the quality just kept going down from there. But I was so excited when it was all through because I made my song, even though the mm -hmm. beat was like way in the background and <laughs> the mic was hanging from my fan. But yeah. having having nothing to yeah. work with forced me to find another way, right? Yeah. And so I say that all to say, when I started this podcast, if you look back at the very first episode, mm -hmm. it's me st sitting still. I opened the photo booth app on my MacBook and I was like, oh, what's this? I thought it was like taking multiple pictures and it was actually mm -hmm. video. So when I hit record and I saw it was video, I was like, oh, it's actually recording. And I just got started there because I always yeah. thought I needed something else. Yeah. As long as you need something else to get started, you'll never start. And now, the difference, I have all the studio equipment I need. And now it's like almost like I don't have the drive I used to because everything mm -hmm. I need is right here. Yeah. So I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. That's when the procrastination creeps in, right? Yeah. And I was telling my wife, I need to order this screen. So I didn't order this screen until this year, like when mm -hmm. I started at PayPal. And I told her last year I needed to order the screen before I could do my podcast. And then I thought back to that story I just told you. No, I'm more resourceful when I have to find another way to make something work. So yeah. the question I had for you about building your, what did you call it? It was a digital gallery, digital gallery. So the beauty of that is there's no overhead. You can use yeah. your social media, Instagram, yeah. for example, yeah. 
to just one picture at a time, build it up, right? What's yeah. one thing you could do to, I feel like you answered your own question. What's one thing you oh, could no, do No, 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 the thing is, I totally relate to the statement that you said about, yeah, it's not about the resources, resourcefulness, right? Because again, that's exactly it. It's like me, because me saying like, if someone donated me a bunch of money, I could just do that. That was really as, as, as a, it, it would skip this step really that I enjoy the most, which is, is the resourcefulness part of yes. like, I know that, because that's what happens, right? If you have a bunch of money, it's just like, oh, you can just throw it at somebody. But even then, they're still not going to do it right. So they're still not going to do it the way that you want, want you know, to get it done. So there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of fun in, in, and that's really what it is, right? I think with this project specifically, I was kind of getting to that point where I was like, I thought I could skip that step. I could, I was like, okay, maybe I could just pay someone to just, you know, get get some of this going for me, and I wouldn't have to actually do it myself. Uh, and they didn't do it right. And for the first, because this was the first time I actually done that. Every idea I've had in the past, I was like, all right, let me just get into it and get started. Um, yeah. But I realized, like, even I, I realized there's certain things that you kind of just have to like, you kind of have to do yourself, right? At least in the beginning, you at least have to kind of put in that legwork. Um, so like. I was trying this to avoid, you know, learning how to use Blender and all these different apps that I had used before. But now I've kind of, I literally, yeah, was like, okay, you know what? I'm getting to that point where I'm going to have to do it myself. And, and, I, and I already have like the Blender app even open because I'm like, I'm going to have to learn this thing. Um, yeah. But for me, that's also the fun that comes, you know, in it. It's just, you get to build this thing, um, create it yourself, and then like use the resources around you to, to work for you, um, mm -hmm. to work toward that next level. So it's it'd be nice to be able to just have you know all the resources in the world and just dump at whatever idea that you have um but i think it's also part of the process to be able to like you know figure it out but it's, it's part of the process right to 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 work within because everyone has like some type of at whatever level you're at that's what I'm not realizing like whatever level you're at there's always going to be like a crutch that you have right even if yes. you're a millionaire, your idea is going to be a billion dollar idea. It's like, how, how do I make, how do I make this billion dollar idea happen with my, with my measly millions, right? So like, you're still going to have to, you're still going to have to find a way to make it work. Yeah. And I think, I think you can't, you can't really use that as an excuse. I was saying like, yeah, um, if someone just dumped me a bunch of money, but I think it was really just to say, because I think at the end of the day, um, even if I had a bunch of money, I would still have to kind of put it to work. And find a way to find the resources with, with what I have, right? Because they're never going to be enough, unfortunately. It's just you're always going to have to find a way to grind and, and, right. and throw some things together. Um, and when you've been doing that your whole life, like it, it, it there's a joy in that. And I, and I love what yeah. you said. And I also congratulate you for for being willing to to just get started at where you're at and not feel that pressure to like, especially if you're like trying to start like whether it's a podcast or a YouTube channel today. It's like you feel that pressure like oh i gotta have like the best gear you know the, the nicest camera i gotta have yeah. you know all this professional equipment when it's like really that isn't that isn't that isn't necessary like no. just start and I'm just necessary. start yeah because yeah. we we always wait for motivation and thank you for the congratulations by the way thank you yeah. so much uh it, it's, it's hard, hard to take it's, it's hard to take compliments and it's hard to to I just, I had a breakthrough today. I realized that the 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 exact center of my name, the three letters, mm -hmm. are ego. I've always had a problem with my ego, pride and ego, and and my journey is one of coming to understand humility. So it's really hard, mm -hmm. like in interviews or when someone says, "Tell me about yourself," it's hard to remain humble. Like, how do you yeah. talk about yourself and remain humble? Uh, what I was going to say is we, we wait sometimes for motivation, right? Like I don't, I don't have the motivation to do it. And it sounds like this is your experience too, but my experience has been that the action, the just doing that, getting started causes the motivation because it's, like, it's almost like this feedback loop. I do something, I get a result. The result is good. It makes me feel good. I feel good. So mm -hmm. I do some more. And then it just, it's that the snowball. Little wins. Yeah, yeah, the little wins along the way. And it just gets that that engine going. That chugga, 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 you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to just get started. 
it almost feels sometimes like I'm building a bus while it's on the highway. Mm. And yeah. like, there's a whole bunch of questions that come along and there's a whole, that still to this day, like I'm just now getting started. This is the second episode since I've started back. Mm -hmm. And there's still all these doubts, all these questions, all these things that I'm telling myself that I need to, yeah. in order to grow and do. And so many people can see the greatness in me, but I don't see it for myself. And I know that's, that's everybody's dilemma, right? That's, that's the, yeah, but that's a beautiful thing. I think that's a beautiful place to be in. I think that's one of those things where, um, cause that's happened to me throughout, throughout my life of where, of people like seeing something in me and just telling me and I'm like, fam, like, what are you talking about? Like that me becoming a manager at Walmart, like I told you, yeah. the orientation when I started, again, first job, nervous, <laughs> you know, freaking out. I, I yeah. talked to this, this, this um, older black man and he was like, wow, like, I don't know, he just, he liked the way that I, that I, that I spoke or whatever. He was like, wow, I can really see you becoming a manager here, like real soon. Um, and just the idea of me becoming manager in six months, like, I was just like, I'm like, okay, like, cool. You know, thanks, I guess. Um, went on with my day. And then like six months later, just because of my work, I think they were like, they promoted me and it was, was crazy. And that's happened to me, like so many different points where it just, you know, some random person is just like, oh, wow, like, I really, you know, I could see you becoming this, this and that. And then, and then you just see it happen. Right. And I, and I, and I've come to really embrace that. Like, even if I don't yeah. see it in the moment, I'm like, if you see something, like, please, you know, let me know because I did made let me know when I'm not seeing so that I can I can hone in on that thing. I mean, I I can see what your manager saw in you back then. There is a leader mm -hmm. in you. When you are a leader, you are a born leader. There's nothing you can do in the world to change it. You can try to Appreciate run from it. it as much as you can, but yeah. anywhere you go, you're gonna end up leading because you yeah. take that initiative. You you take that first step, you take that leap of faith, you, you face things courageously. And that's yeah. the theme of what I'm hearing. But in that people think that it's, it takes a lot of courage, right? Which mm -hmm. it does. But I think the main thing in here, especially for you coming from where you came from here and, and learning as you went and growing and, and achieving, that takes a certain level of vulnerability. You said you couldn't yeah. do this alone. If you were not vulnerable, you wouldn't have been able to no. integrate. You would have been lonely and miserable and, you know, no. scared and, but you, you went for it head on. Yeah. Now as, yeah. as a leader, because that's what you are. Appreciate it. <laughs> I feel like there is a question inside of you that you think other people should be asking themselves that could help them get on the path that you've been on, mm. which is one of action. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, I mean, I appreciate you. I don't know. Calling my, it's weird, right? You know, I don't know. I don't know if leaders call themselves leaders. I, I it's one of those things that I, it's not something that I, that I, that I, kind of carry with me but I I don't know I just try to do right so it's like for example mentoring is something that's really important to me um and that's something that I believe can be done at any level um mm -hmm. so like you know if I see someone that that needs help I, I try to reach out so there's there's someone that I'm mentoring right now and it's been really dope to see him kind of just evolve over the years um and and see some of the situations that he's navigating and and, and and just kind of being that that resource that I wish that I had. Um, but something that I wish more people asked themselves, um, I guess, I don't know, man. I don't know if I necessarily have a question that I wish people asked themselves. I mean, maybe it'll come the more and more I keep talking, but I think I've seen a lot of people settle. And that's something that like, that's something that's been hard for me to understand right and 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 at so many jobs that i've been in it's just it almost feels like it almost feels like people like i've seen people be like for example the last job that i was in i've had people be like hey you know i don't plan on being in this job forever and i'm like okay cool yeah <laughs> so what's your plan it's like you know they, they don't have any right they're just like i don't right. plan on being in this job forever but but you know well, what do you, you plan? don't have to go yeah right 
so you know so like i'm over here you know busting my ass working with them but also like designing and then doing all these things because i'm like i don't want to be here <laughs> and i'm going to put in the work to not be here you right. know because this is not where i want to be so it's just it's but I, I see i've seen people in so many situations where it almost feels like they're stuck um mm. and and maybe they don't even realize they're stuck right because they're yeah. just they're just for a variety of reasons whether it's like family pressure you just you just don't feel yourself advancing so you just feel like you can't do much because you got to take care of this take care of that um or because you just maybe have an expectation that just things will just magically work themselves out without you having mm. to put effort but yeah. um i i really wish i don't know man i i i feel like i, I, I would hear the question myself i wish i guess more people would just I guess I could maybe ask themselves, like, you know, is this, is this, is this what you really want? Is this, is this where you want to be? Um, and, or, you know, what can you do? What can I do to change it type of thing? Like, or what can you do to change it? Right. It's, it's yes. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I wish I want to help people because I, I love what it is that you're doing with this podcast. And, and, um, because one of the things that's important to me too is helping people kind of like navigate out of their situations, right? Because I mm. feel like, you know, I've been in a lot of like situations that I feel like I could have easily gotten stuck in, right? Because mm -hmm. they were they were just good enough, right? And it's like, oh, I could just work in this job and just, you know, do what I need to do, maybe become manager, maybe one day I'll become store manager, you know? <laughs> and, you know, I'll, I'll be able to have a family. Like when you go to Walmart, the, they preach to you about, oh, you could become like the CEO at Walmart you, if you put in enough work. I was like, that's not gonna happen. But actually not even that. I, I genuinely believe when I was there, I was like, I feel like I could do it. I just don't want to, um, right. because there's a lot of like, my integrity just, just didn't align with their values. Um, but, um, but, but I've seen a lot of people get stuck and whether it's that job or the jobs that I've had, uh, you know, after, and I wish I could help people kind of get unstuck, you know, help them kind of see that next path that they need to take and not feel so, so, and a lot of it probably is fear, but not feel so afraid to, to just take that next leap. We share a passion there because in, in most of the situations, most of my interactions with people, the question will arise, like, do you have plans? What else do you do? And they're like, you know, like you said, I don't plan to be here the rest of my life or forever, but I don't have a plan either. Yeah. I, it bugs me when I see people are stuck or people aren't challenging themselves. It just, I don't understand it. Yeah. I think that's a leadership trait too, though. Like, we are always challenging ourselves. Why aren't other people? And yeah. and you said it, it's, I feel like they just get settled into that routine and that it, I feel like our brain is just meant to, or not meant to, but wired to automate certain things so that we don't have to think as hard. And we're going against the grain here, making ourselves think and making our, like challenging ourselves all the time. But it's not for everyone. Not everybody likes mm -hmm. that. Uh, I feel like the question I heard here, and to clarify what you said, was, yeah. is this the best I can be doing or can I be doing more? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I love that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's perfect. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Awesome. I agree. Yeah. Thank you for well, synthesizing those, those thoughts. Because sometimes, yeah, sometimes I just gotta like, I just gotta speak it out. But yes, that, that's exactly it. Um, this is the best that I could be doing. I think a lot of people probably know that they're not doing enough, right? Mm -hmm. But they've kind of allowed themselves to just kind of settle into this situation for a variety of reasons. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that I, I don't know what, and this is just God kind of giving me wisdom at a young age to do, but I've always... Um, or maybe it's just from our culture because we put, you know, our elders on such a high pedestal. We like we really value their insight. But mm -hmm. I've always just like stuck around older people, right, and watch older people and watch how they move and operate. Um, and I noticed I've seen a lot of older people when I was younger that were stuck. What that I felt were stuck, right? Because you know whether it's like they have a lot of regrets or they've just been in the same position doing the same thing for decades, and they 
probably wouldn't even be able to know how they got there, right? And then when I see, and then as I got older and seeing people my age or younger do those same, have those same patterns where, you know, they somehow think things are just, they, you know, you think you have time, you think you have all this time that, that you know, you just, if I, I don't have a plan right now, but eventually, you know, things are just going to figure themselves out. It's like, nah, fam, like 30 years can go by just like that. And, and, and you're in the same place and, you, and like, yeah. you can just blink yeah. and it happens. Like, you know, and, and, and it's why put yourself through that. Why not? Why not? Even if you don't know what it is that you want, why not take those steps, you know, sooner that, because again, it's through, it's through conversation, right? It's through putting your, getting yourself out of your comfort zone that Lord knows when new opportunity might pop up, right? You might speak to mm-hmm. someone that's like, hey, have you heard of this job that you probably had no idea existed because you're too busy stuck in your bubble? You know, that could right. potentially open up a new door that, you know, changes your whole trajectory. So it's, it's, <sighs> there's a lot there. There's a lot there, but I, I wish, I wish more people would challenge themselves out of their, out of their comfort zone and just, and just try to aim for just a little bit more. Me too. Just, I a hundred percent, a thousand percent agree with everything you just said. And that's a great segue to the last question here, which is who are two people that you know are challenging themselves to be more, to get more, to do more, and are actually killing it right now that you would like to see on the podcast? That I would like to see. Okay. Uh, Definitely first person would be I don't know if you've spoken to her. Shara, have you spoken to Shara? You know, she works so the balance as well. Get out of she's, my she's, head. I think, if you're like the king of LinkedIn, she's like the queen of LinkedIn, man. Shara, yes. Shara is everywhere. <laughs> so what's really funny is that was the exact, per- when I thought about asking you this question, uh-huh. I'm like, he's going to say Shara. Shara Rosenbaum, right? Yeah. Nah, yep. man. Shara is the best. I, I absolutely love her. I think she's great. But she work at the is is absolutely insane i don't know how she does it man when, when, we, when you ask me the question of how do you juggle things i'm like i look at her and, and oh. juggling a family and all the different endeavors that she's in it's yeah. absolutely incredible i'm just like how do you manage that like how do you how do you stay sane um mm. so she she's definitely <laughs> a big role model for me i'm just like you know i want to be like you when i grow up share it because because you're killing it but yeah. yeah that's that's funny that yeah. so little backstory i've been meaning to talk to her we've been trying to sync up for like two months now yeah and it's either something comes up or we're just too tired to hop on or you know we're gonna enjoy our weekend we don't want to think about anything else right now so i would imagine that she's actually saying no <laughs> you know um she's, she's actually busy like it's yeah real um it's it's yeah but but definitely but she's also someone that despite how busy she is she does still try to reach out to people and like you know and 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 communicate with them so when you do get a chance to talk to her i think that's going to be a great conversation because she 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 has a wealth of knowledge for sure um y'all y'all are definitely like the linkedin folks i i don't know how i've always been deviating a little bit because i've watched you because I was, man, I was so intimidated when I used to go to these meetups, like, especially not, you know, trying to, still trying to get in. I, I was like, I would rush from work, show up there all sweaty. I'm like, fam, I'm just hungry. I'm just here for pizza at this point. I just, just want to eat. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mad. It feels like, it just felt, I'm sure they probably weren't, but it felt like a sea of just senior designers. It's just like all these higher level people, you know, and it's just like, where do I fit into this, this, this whole thing? Yeah. Uh, you know, and then I was just, I would just sit there and take my notes. I'd be a little too afraid to even ask questions, but it was just like, it was important for me to just be there at the very least, right? Just be in the room. Yes. Uh, and the pandemic definitely helped in that once everything started switching to virtual, it was a little easier to kind of just reach out to people on LinkedIn and not have to like be there in person. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, but I've, I've always watched how like you would just navigate these fans. I feel like every every event I would go to, you would be you would be there. I was man, I was trying to I didn't I didn't know how else I was gonna get in besides uh-huh. immersion. It's like learning a language. Like yeah. how do you learn a language? You immerse yourself in it. Right, you gotta be in it. Yeah. I found the culture, I found the people, 
that were doing what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I was like, let's, let's talk, let's mingle, let's yeah. network, you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's, I, I, yeah, I would rush to these events and, and it's, again, it's part of, you know, you have to get yourself out of your comfort zone, right? You got to do things that are, are outside of your norm. And, and yeah. I really, I didn't feel like I belong there. I didn't feel like these, these were people, but it, yeah. but eventually, you know, once that, that imposter syndrome kind of goes away, you realize like, like all these people are also here asking the same question. They're all, you know, we're all trying to do the same, the same thing. Right. And this is, this, yeah. this is a nice little community there for sure. Um, but, but no, second person that, that I look up to that's really uh, flourishing right now um hmm, 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 hmm. the second person that I look up to that's really flourishing right now I think I think um I don't know if I necessarily have a second person um part of it too though is because like I just try to stay in my own lane right, right? and like I I try not to compare myself to anybody else. I try not, I try to just, you know, I try to just kind of do my own thing and then make yeah. sure that I'm doing the best thing I need to do. Just mental health wise, because sometimes you begin on LinkedIn and it's just <laughs> you feel <laughs> even more yeah. like an imposter. Like yeah, people it just crushes your soul. Yeah. yeah. They're putting out <laughs> articles, they're giving UX tips. Right. I'm over here. Do I even right. know? Like, right. It's just yeah everybody everybody is just excelling everywhere so it feels like you know it it, it feels like but um but I kind of try to stay in my own lane but as I mean there's a few people obviously um I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to, to Stefan because I, I know he's on the the design plug podcast now for for season two um I have not but yeah that's Stephen. definitely yeah uh Sonia oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he used to be at a lot of the mean meetups too. Yes, he did. Um, yeah. Yeah. We, we linked up. I don't know if we linked up. No, we connected on LinkedIn because we, we kind of like started around the same time too. We tried yeah. to do like a little um, personal project together and we would like, we would meet up at, uh, what is it called? Legacy West. Yeah. We would like go up there and like try to work together and come up with all these designs together. And Man, one of the best things about this industry for me has been just watching the people from like two two years ago, two to three years ago, and where they're at today. And like yes. that is motivation. Like we were <laughs> we were both like trying to figure this thing out, going to these meetups, not knowing what we were doing, what to expect. Or if know. we would ever land a job. Damn. And just like, and he's also took the, the self tie ride. And every time, every now and then I would hit him on like, man, I think I should just go to a boot camp or just 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 go to a school or something and he was like nah man just stick with it just stick with it um and now he's working at clavio and he, he he just recently moved to austin and he's doing his thing so yeah. it's just it's dope it's dope to see all of us really it feels like a graduation class in a weird way but like it's, it's <laughs> dope to see because we also went to uh the big design conference right so see yes. all those people yeah a lot of them have, have jobs now and like they're doing well and it's just it's it's dope it's dope well, thank you so much, man, for the for the conversation, the references and the inspiration. Honestly, like you never know what you're going to get when you when you talk to someone. And I feel like. I get a little something from everybody I talk to. And today I'm just motivated just a little bit more, actually a lot more to just keep moving, yeah. keep moving, keep doing, keep trusting the results will come for sure, man. We will see y'all next time on Question Everything. I'm going to drop the link for you to donate whatever you want to help keep the show going. Uh, I like to reserve that booth at Redefine Coffee. It's just a better backdrop and to get that good old coffee noise background uh, ambiance. But anyways, we'll see you next time.